much and welcome today, Ella, for allowing me to come and interview you at your music school in East Bentley in Melbourne. Would you like to start by explaining to everybody or describing to everybody a bit about your music school here, please? Um, our music school has named Alice Music Studio. I am uh, started it in 2012. I, uh, firstly, I, I was teaching from home. My own, I had my own students, which I was teaching from home. Then I had another two teachers, violin teacher and uh, guitar teacher. They all used to come to my home to teach and uh, we all started from our home. And we started in February 2012. In April 2012, we moved in the premises where we had only three rooms and um, 50 students. That was in 2012, April. And then by August, we expanded to uh, rebuild another three rooms, uh, forums. By the end of the year 2012, we had uh, around four, seven rooms all together in the shop, and uh, more students, around 90 students, then 120 by the end of the year, and uh, more teachers. We teach in all the different instruments, piano, guitar, woodwinds, voice, and uh, all levels, and we prepare for the exams, for students who wish to do exams. We also have a concert at the end of the year. Once a year we taking our students outside of the shop, uh, we rent in Kingston Art Center Hall or Human Secondary College Hall, and we offer them to perform at school concert. Uh, before school concert during the year, we offering them to do exams, uh, Australian Music as a National Board exams, or any other syllabus, and uh, participating in competition competitions. One of the st our students this year uh, took first place in the first effort by the day competition. Yes, fantastic. So, what sort of format do your lessons take? Are they all individual one-on-one -on -one lessons or do you offer any other sorts of classes? We offer in group and individual lessons, but uh, most of lessons here are individual. It came that it became more popular to have individual lessons here. Uh, with the groups, it's, it's a bit complicated because it's hard to find someone who can come the same day, the same level. And we actually offer young group lessons only at the very, very beginner level. As soon as the student is more advanced beginner, we wouldn't recommend to have group lesson. And do you offer any other sorts of classes other than learning an instrument or singing? Do you do, for example, preschool classes or uh, band classes or theory or anything yes, else? Yes, we do preschool classes. It's a morning uh, program, Kinder Beat, uh, created by Brisbane musicians um, Mark Gibson and Mona uh, Robinson. And they come here once a year in January and um, giving us our teachers' workshop. So it's a Kinder Beat 1, Kinder Beat 2, Kinder Beat 3. And another program we promoting is Encone Keys. Encone Keys, it's piano program. So it's very interesting for kids because they don't need to sit and look at the score for 20 or 30 minutes. We do different activities and they playing standing up at the keyboard. So it's like more fun for them and it keeps their interest longer <laughs> for longer. Is that for a particular age group, the encore on keys? Um, no, the, they, uh. they Mark and Mona offering uh, um, four books for four five year olds so three and a half from three and a half then they have four um, more um, adult beginners for 12 uh, 11 12 year olds and yes so that doesn't need to be um, only preschool age okay and with other instruments that uh, you have taught here 
Are there particular methods that you get your teachers to use or is it up to the teacher to decide? Well, we, we follow the traditional method. We not following uh, any other methods, traditional method but when we teach students to read music from the score. And we offering some books, uh, popular books uh, like Alfred Basic, Bastian and uh, some other. But mostly it's uh, teacher's choice what book to, to use and what book they feel comfortable with because all teachers are qualified and um, we looking for the student to be able to read the music from the school. Great. So what was it that decided you all those years ago to actually employ other teachers and not just keep teaching at home by yourself? I have a couple of motivations. First motivation was First of all, I completed business course after I completed Monash. Uh, Monash uh, I always wanted to work for myself. And after I completed Monash, I wanted to work from home as a piano teacher. And I was sent uh, to complete uh, short business course in Homeskilling College. So I completed short business course. I had business plan ready, 70 pages. And the whole website, everything was ready. <laughs> We organized everything during that short course, two weeks short course. And then I had my family, children, and I just stopped. And uh, by that, I was still teaching, but it sounds like I had always in my mind. And um, when I had little children, so I thought that uh, my future is to teach students from 4 till 8 p.m. and I can't see my own children. Or I had to give children to babysitter and give part of money to babysitter. So I needed to change my lifestyle, but I, I didn't want to change my uh, job. I wanted to st uh, still to be in the atmosphere of music, music environment. So I thought if I would um, employ teachers who can teach from four, and I would do some administrative and um, supervising work from mornings, and I can release my time from four o'clock so and it's it's very different when you teaching some other child sitting locked in a room and their children outside of the door while now I'm at reception for example and even if children next to me so they can see me they don't need to the class <laughs> so it's very different so this is was one of the motivations yes and uh, Basically, this is was the main motivation when I started thinking about moving out of house to the shop. Yes. Was it hard to find other teachers to start with? You mentioned that you had two teachers that used to come to your home to teach before you got a retail premises. So were they hard to find? So I, I wouldn't start finding teachers if I don't have students. First, I was trying to find students, and when I had, for example, three guitar students on the list, I, I needed to, to find teacher. So I mm, advertised before I opened the premises here. I, uh, I advertised for teachers and for students. So uh, by by February March, I already had a folder with teachers' resumes. So like fifteen guitar teachers, five piano teachers six voice teachers already had this folder ready and as soon as I have had new um, students like for example if I would have three more guitar students on the list so I would try to open I would open that folder and look for the teacher and this way I would, was building up the teachers according to the students and is there anything that you'd like to pass on to another person who might be thinking of employing teachers for the first time or any other advice that you could give them about employing teachers? Yes, so when we employing teachers, we have to look at teachers' communication skills, not, not as much as how professionally and how great he can play on the music instruments or how great performer he is. We have to see his communication skills because for a little child who starts music is more important 
to get along and to like his teacher rather than uh, his professional achievements. <laughs> so we have to look uh, very much at the communication skills apart what qualification and the experience experience he has. Of course, experience is important because if he has experience, it means that he already used to teach students. But if the teacher starts teaching first time, we have to really look at his communication skills with the little children. Do you normally choose teachers who have not got experience or teachers who do have experience? I prefer, now I prefer to choose teachers who has experience, but it don't, so I would, um, I would supervise them and give the ideas and talk to them and visit their lessons and help them to start to be good with children and because most of the clients here children. Yeah, that's great. So you're supporting them even if they haven't got the experience? Yes, if they have education and they have enthusiasm. So that's why I'm, I'm very happy to help them. And I always hear for them to explain and to give the ideas and great. to help, yes. And in terms of choosing uh, a retail premises to set up your music school, can you remember what were the main things that you were looking for to make, help you make that choice? Yes, it, I was looking for studio to be seen from uh, somewhere. So like this studio is on the main road, so all passing cars can see us. or we also don't want to pay higher, very high rent. So I also look at the rent price. For me, it's, it's better when we don't pay big rent, but in the shop, big shopping centers, like um, where everything, uh, all the retails in the big shopping, usually the rent is quite expensive. Yes. So I would prefer to find something with um, less expensive rent, but it still can be seen from the central road or from the train station from around yes but we also use website we use a lot of um, promotions and advertising and SEO which takes our website on the page one of Google so it, this really helps and we um, customized our website for um, the reason that it's the best way to promote us and have you done that part yourself with the website? No, I can't do everything. So for me, I have to focus on something and some other people has to do like accounts and bookkeeping and the website. I have a website um, designer who looking after our website. But I also have to regularly send the information to that website. Do you have many other people that help you to run the business? I started business by myself doing uh, half day administrative work and the second part of the day teaching. So I was teaching first uh, one year and a half. I was teaching from four till eight, including Saturday from nine till three. Uh, and I also did administrative work from nine thirty. And uh, I didn't have booking system, so I did manually everything. Was a lot of work done since that time. I organized the booking system and um, I replaced myself with the other teachers. And uh, now, what was the question? So, do you have other staff to help you? So oh, you yes, have yes. An accountant yes. yes, I have a bookkeeper, I have accountant, I have receptionists, uh, two receptionists, and I have a um, website designer. Yes, this is most of the people. I don't have a manager. I don't have manager still. So are you really in the position of manager then? Is that what you would? Well, if I would have uh, three schools, I would employ a manager who can look after three schools. Mm -hmm. One manager after three schools, mm -hmm. but not at this stage. Are you looking to expand into another location? Yes, I feel this year that we don't have enough rooms because what we offer in client that we can accommodate families with three children to give them 
uh, lessons at the same time and the same day. Now we can't accommodate this. We don't have enough room, enough space, or so I feel that it's good to uh, find some other place, maybe you know, 15, 20 minutes apart and uh, have another one. Well, that's a great position to be in, to be ready to expand when you've got yes. a demand there. Have you got any advice then you would like to give somebody who's starting out perhaps? The music school? Yeah. Yes, I would say it's good to get advice from the accountant before starting the school because I did not get any advice and um, that was not right. So because you know that uh, you have to pay GST if it's more than 50,000 a year or 75,000 a year now. So and then the accountant has to explain you that you have to pay people superannuation and not just wage it's superannuation, it's tax, everything. So it has to be very clear and you have to understand that you have to have separated account and collect money for the teacher's wages. So it's, it shouldn't be a situation like you don't have enough money on the account to pay teacher's wages because this is the main thing we have to do when we have teachers. Mm -hmm. We have to pay on time. Absolutely. Yes. Right. And teacher has to be happy with his wage. We can't pay two or two less. So there is accountant is a very important person you have to meet. You have to organize your website. The website is the second important thing because it's like your home and everything um, website, it, not just website, it has to be search engine optimization, which will bring your website on the page one Google so that people can see you. Without SEO, you have website, but people cannot see you. Exactly. With this exactly. SEO, so people can see you and can find you and uh, be very um, flexible with clients. Uh, you have to organize your policy, which exactly will explain client what do you want from client. And even if you have policy, you still have to be flexible because there are a lot of different cases and you can't um, sometimes fit this or those cases, that policy, so you have to face-to-face -face negotiate to people if you want to keep that client, you have to be sometimes very flexible and um, understandable. And yeah, because what we, we want to keep clients, we don't want them to go away, and if we keep clients, and we, we want to have good feedback, good talking about us. Uh, Absolutely. So, have you got any challenges at the moment, any things that you would particularly like to change or get help with? With this music school? Yes. In the relationship of... There was a lot of things done with the music school. I, I'm, we're working now on uh, online booking. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have online booking. Every student is going to have his own um, profile page where they can book makeup lessons from their home right. and so this is what we're going to have. Is um, there a particular program you're using for that? No, it's a, it's a booking system, it's, it's a IT, we communicating with IT who does it for us. So you're yeah. having one built specially? Mm? You're having it built specially for your website are you? Yes, it's customized right. booking system. Right. Which, yes. That'll be a and big time saver. Yes, and we also have um, MailChimp going to have this because yeah. we found that this is the best way to communicate with the clients. Yeah. And uh, this is what is going to be during this month. Mm -hmm. um, retail, to develop retail, but this is not, not, not the main focus of the school. We're not focusing yeah. on retail, we're focusing on teachers, on education, good e music education. Less on retail. Retail is mostly for our own clients mm -hmm. who doesn't have time to go around and look. We we selling books from here also for our own clients and ordering books according to what teacher needs for that client for the student. Um, you also sell instruments as well, I believe. We yes, we can we ordering if they 
not not a lot, but if the client or the link wants to buy instrument, the way we order the instrument, we also rent and cover the instruments. Yeah. Sometimes the mm, more popular for them for the clients is rent instrument because they don't know if the child will continue or not. So renting out instruments is more popular than selling instruments here. Great. So realistically, every music school is always going to have some challenges along the way. <coughs> uh, what would you say are your greatest successes or the things that you've enjoyed most about having a music school as you've got now? First of all, I have the lifestyle which I wanted to have. I have my children after four. So I can pick them up from school and I do all administrative stuff and I also teaching students at morning. So this is the, I have what I wanted to have and I still have that environment, music environment and I've learned a lot of new people and new teachers, you know, with the teachers, the personality. So that's like family for me now. That's <laughs> Good great. family, yes. And um, I, uh, I like teaching, I like teaching, and at this stage, I like to visit classes of my teachers who ask me for help and for advice. I like to do, to do open classes for teachers, and um, we sometimes doing some mocking, mock exams before the uh, original exam, real exam, which helps students. and. I, I love everything about my music school. That's it's like great. my child. <laughs> oh, that's great. Really good, yeah. <clears throat> so, look, I'd like to thank you very much for this opportunity and the fact that you're so willing to share your journey with other music teachers. It's always fascinating to hear how everyone's got to the particular point they're at and that you're going to expand. That's very exciting. And I hope that all of the other listeners through our Music School Success TV videos are equally as fascinated and grateful for your time. So thank you so much, Ella, and I will uh, hope to see you again in the near future. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>